Hello, everybody. My name is Charlotte Wenner, and I'm representing Moving Forward, RBE Learning Network. This is a teaser film for a presentation I will be giving in the future called Smoke and Mirrors, Searching for a Scientific, Life-Oriented Method to Deal with the Global COVID-19 Crisis. I was asked to make this film by World Summit Global to include as a topic in the panel discussion on Earth Day, April the 22nd. I believe that this information is important because almost everybody has seen that this global pandemic has made the disastrous consequences of clinging to old, outdated systems painfully obvious. At the same time, many people recognize that it provides opportunities to transition to a new holistic, scientific, and life-focused system. One of the uh, things that makes it so difficult to deal with this new pandemic uh, is that it is a multifaceted situation. I have identified six factors which complicate the situation, making it difficult to address properly. First of all, we have alternate models within the medical science. We have statistics which can be questioned for their validity and various models. We have differing political systems. Uh, we have the benefits and losses, of course, in economic systems. And uh, we have the uh, social effects, what is happening among populations in terms of polarization versus unification. And we have, of course, various uh, responses from different countries that need to be evaluated uh, as to their success. But for the panel discussion for Earth Day, I would like to focus on one of these factors, and that is uh, the alternative uh, models um, of health and sickness practiced in the medical professions. Uh, this story begins in the 19th century, and it is a story of rivalry between Louis Pasteur, who promulgated the concept of the germ theory, and uh, Antoine Beauchamp, who had the concept of terrain. Now, germ theory states that there are small particles outside the body which invade the body and cause sickness. Terrain uh, theory says that these particles may enter the body, but if the uh, terrain or uh, um, immunity system is strong enough, it will just they will just be fought off, and the people will not become sick. And actually, vaccines are rather uh, based on this terrain theory, in that antibodies are injected into the body to prepare a terrain with enough immunity to fight off any viruses that may enter. Now, in the COVID-19 story, we can extend this terrain to a much larger area than the body, for of course we live on a planet. And recently, whole ecosystems have been destabilized. There has been deforestation, pollution of water, pollution of air, um, and extinction of plant and animal life. Then we have, of course, uh, the terrain of particular countries, how, how, how supportive for health are they, the area people live in, the city people live in, and the home. What is the home light? Is there enough hygiene? Is it uh, something that will su support and promote good hope, health? Obviously, poor people are going to score very low on many of those factors and makes them more susceptible to uh, contracting deadly viruses than those living in more health supportive areas. This is one great inequality that needs to be addressed if we want to contain pandemics. Then we have the personal terrain of our body and there have been high risks identified such as heart disease, uh, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, hypertension, cancer, obesity, smoking. Um, these are all things that are a are, can be related to lifestyle. Indeed, diets high in refined sugars, refined carbohydrates, and processed food have been linked to higher risk preconditions. 
Then we have the psychological elements that increase uh, cortisol and adrenaline, causing stress. Hyperstress uh, tension is another precondition. Uh, another thing is prolonged experience. Uh, reports of prolonged exposure to 2G and 3G on mice has shown that this reduces immunity. And finally, a diet high in zinc, lysine, glycine, C and D have been shown to strengthen the immunity system in general. Thankfully, in many countries, the rise in the infection of COVID-19 has slowed or is beginning to fall. We can talk about a flattening of the curve, and now we have to look to the future. It is my opinion that the only effective uh, approach to combating COVID-19 and pandemics in the future is to take a long-range, terrain-focused view for a recovery plan. That includes the reduction of um, industrial farmed animal products or eating a plant-based diet, getting exercise, sunshine, enough social interaction and positive experience. We need to change um, uh, debilitating personal lifestyle choices such as smoking, drinking and eating unhealthy foods. There also needs to be a general testing of people to keep our statistics reliable. Um, the reporting in the media needs to be pure for information and not fear-mongering. We also need to encourage a positive unity-oriented supportive mind sense set. Harvard has, uh, a scientist in Harvard has recommended yoga every day. Statistics need to be based on universal testing, specific causes, and the relative percentage to the entire population. Furthermore, proper testing and safeguards need to be done before implementing widespread 5G. But most important, we have to have an open sourcing on everything needed for research and treatment. Testing and full trial procedures need to be also conducted before uh, giving a vaccine to everybody. But we cannot stop there. We have to take a long-term terrain focus, and that is the planet society, government, and economy, the cities, and the homes. And these are items that have been covered by several organizations, such as the Venus Project, the Zeitgeist Movement, Copiosis, etc. But it's something that we all need to join together to make a reality. There is an opening at the present moment to build something better than the way it was, a resource-based economy with a life value onto axiology. For more information on any of these subjects, please go to the web, uh, YouTube channel Moving Forward RBE Learning Network. Thank you.